Hello and welcome to this basics episode on the Crampton, a locomotive which during the 1850s was the fastest in Europe, if not the world. The Crampton locomotive was an unusual design from the 1840s, which took on a life of its own in Europe during the middle of the 19th century. Crampton locomotives became the first locomotives to be recorded breaking the magic ton, albeit in kilometre rather than miles per hour, thanks to having some of the largest driving wheels and highest boiler pressures in use at that time. So who was the Crampton behind the Crampton locomotive? Thomas Russell Crampton was born in 1816 in Broadstairs in the English county of Kent. He was one of those annoying polymaths, designing not just railway locomotives, but laying the first international submarine telegraph cable in 1851, designing a hydraulic tunnel boring machine, and inter alia proposing an earlier version of the Channel Tunnel, being involved with the Broadstairs Gas Company and modernising the water supply of Broadstairs. He also designed a new tower for the parish church. He began his engineering career as an assistant to Sir Marc Brunel, the French émigré father of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, in 1839. He later worked in the drawing office of the Great Western Railway under Daniel, later of course Sir Daniel Gooch, baronet. Whilst working for the Great Western, he was involved with the design of the famous Firefly class of broad gauge locomotives. He left the Great Western in 1843 to pursue his own interest in locomotive design and locomotive building. He had seen the advantages of the broad gauge in allowing the use of large diameter driving wheels, of having large square fireboxes and an ample heating service, the use of large boilers and having far more space between the frames for the traditional Victorian preference for inside cylinders and valve gear. All the moving parts hidden away like a lady's ankle beneath a crinoline skirt. Crampton had also studied the then largest locomotives on the four feet eight and a half inches gauge. It was not yet the standard gauge. And these were the Stevenson long boilers, which, while fast runners, hammered the track and were unstable at speed. In coming up with his new ideas on locomotive design, he took lessons learned from both gauges to create what became a unique locomotive, the Crampton. A locomotive which he marketed as being safer than any then in service. Crampton, like many engineers of his day, believed that a low centre of gravity was preferential for a railway locomotive. Indeed, the performance of the top-heavy Stevenson long boilers at speed was certainly a cause for worry. Crampton was also concerned that the boiler should receive the maximum amount of support as possible. Therefore, he placed the boiler as low as it was possible to do so, whilst retaining it in a conventional position. The boiler was therefore low-slung, carried on top of the frames, this meant that the main thrust was not carried through the boiler as hitherto, but rather through the frames which became the main structural component. This was a major change in thinking compared with more orthodox locomotive designers who had considered the boiler to be the main structural element. To support this low-slung boiler, Crampton used multiple small carrying wheels. He had observed that many accidents had happened to six-wheel locomotives due to excessive loading of the leading axle. Therefore, spreading the weight over multiple axles would reduce axle load, reducing damage to the track, and hopefully mitigate any accident brought on through a broken axle. He preferred to use a larger diameter leading wheel of these carrying wheels as, in his own words, these rolled down the road before the engine. Because the boiler was so low slung, it meant the driving wheels could not be put in their usual position. Instead, they were carried behind the boiler. And this enabled the boiler to be carried as low as possible, but allowing for the largest diameter driving wheels as possible. The only drawback of this arrangement was that the firebox became very cramped, it was very long and narrow, and it must have been quite a challenge to throw the coke right to the front of these very long, narrow fireboxes. 
Finally, there was a position of the cylinders. Crampton disliked the use of inside cylinders, and in any case, with a low-slung boiler carried on top of the frames, there was no room for that traditional arrangement. So like Robert Stevenson's long boiler locomotives, they were placed outside, located midway along the frames. This in turn did away with a crank axle, something which Crampton had also noted was very prone to failure. And in any case, a crank axle would have been impossible with the axle behind the firebox. And thus Crampton used outside cylinders, outside connecting rods and outside valve gear of his own designing. This made the locomotive far more user friendly in terms of maintenance. Regarding ease of maintenance, Crampton also placed a regulator valve outside the boiler. This made it easy to access for any repairs. It avoided any problem of jamming due to differential expansion of metals and it made it simple and easy to lubricate. Indeed, Crampton topped his regulators with a large brass lubricator which would feed oil down to the valves and pistons. He used horizontal cylinders, but steeply inclined valves and valve chest. Large diameter driving wheels meant a low piston speed, which therefore reduced wear on the cylinder and the pistons, and helped reduce back pressure in the cylinders. His outside steam passengers were exceptionally large for the period, so to his valves, valve chest and exhaust pipes, creating a very free running locomotive indeed. Many of these points were included in his various patents. His first patent was taken out in 1843, which included the placing of the driving wheels behind the firebox. A second patent of 1845 covered his firebox design. A third patent of 1847 saw the evolution of the design to include a double frame. Finally, in 1849, a patent included a locomotive with an intermediate driving shaft, and these later Cramptons will be covered in another video. The first of Crampton's patent safety locomotives were built not for British customers, but the Chamon de Feu du Liège à Namur in Belgium in 1845. The pair were appropriately named the Liège and the Namur and were constructed in Whitehaven in Cumbria by the firm of Tulk and Lee. Incidentally, this firm, under Quaker ownership as Fletcher Jennings and Company, would build Dolgoch and Talochlin for the Talochlin Railway in mid Wales two decades later. Under trial, the Namur reached a speed of 51 and a half miles per hour with a train of loaded goods wagons weighing 80 tons. With a passenger train, she achieved 60 miles per hour and whilst running light engine, the impressive speed of 72 miles an hour. Sadly, Namur and Liège were destined never to run in Belgium, and instead, with a third locomotive of the same type from the same builder, were sold to the Eastern Counties Railway in Britain. The mighty London and North Western Railway had also ordered a Crampton from Tulk and Lee. She was named the London and is recorded at running at 65 miles an hour under load. The LNWR also built its own Crampton, the Courier, at its crew works. Finally, the LNWR ordered the biggest Crampton yet, the enormous Liverpool, from Bury, Curtis and Kennedy of Liverpool, which reached an amazing top speed of 72 miles per hour under load. This was thanks to the use of 8 feet diameter driving wheels and 18 by 24 inches cylinders. In total, 24 Cramptons were built for service in the United Kingdom. Whilst the reception of the Crampton locomotive in Britain may have been somewhat lukewarm due to their supposed rough riding and their long fixed wheelbases damaging the permanent way, the Crampton became incredibly popular in Europe. They also saw service in Denmark and in the United States. In 1846, Crampton took out a patent in France for his locomotives, claiming royalties of 2,500 francs per locomotive thus constructed. French engineers, however, soon found ways to build their own Cramptons without having to pay such an enormous sum. The first railway to use Cramptons in France was the line from Paris to Lille which also extended to the Belgian frontier 
and they adopted the Crampton in 1849. These first French Cramptons had 7 feet diameter driving wheels, 16 by 20 inch cylinders and are recorded as running at 65 miles per hour with an express passenger train weighing 80 to 90 tonnes. Around 120 Cramptons were built in France and were mostly used by the Chamon de Fer du Nord from Paris to the Channel ports, the Chamon de Fer de Est running from Paris to the Belgian frontier and into Germany, and the PLM, the Paris uh, Lyon Méditerranée, which ran from Paris via Lyon and Marseille to the Mediterranean and was the longest railway in the world when it opened in the 1850s. Cramptons operated in all the top expresses in and around Paris, so much so that the expression prendre la Crampton meant to take the fast train. The Emperor Napoleon III even showed approval by having one haul his imperial train. And indeed, the Crampton locomotive became one synonymous with the reign of Napoleon III. After 1870, however, the Crampton star started to fall out of the firmament and many of them were displaced to secondary routes. Thankfully, one of these locomotives has entered preservation. Le Continent was built for the Chamon de Feu de Paris at Strasbourg in 1852 by Messieurs Deron et Caille of Paris. She has seven feet driving wheels, a 120 psi boiler and cylinders measuring 16 by 22 inches. She was in service until 1913 after running a staggering one and a half million miles. She was restored at Epernay in 1925 and put on public display at the Gare de l'Est in Paris from 1931 to 1947. She was used for publicity purposes by the SNCF, the French national operator, in the 1950s and in the 1960s, pulling a train of restored contemporary rolling stock. She even took a starring role in the 1967 French TV series La Princesse du Rail. During 2003, she was displayed on the Champs Elysees. She is currently on display at the French National Railway Museum, the Cité du Train at Moulaus, the last of her kind. So those are the basics on Thomas Russell Crampton and his patent high wheel locomotive although perhaps not so well regarded in anglophonic countries, as railway historian Dr Jacques Payan has remarked, they were the premier train de grande vitesse. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please show your appreciation by liking, sharing and subscribing. And see you all next time on Rail Story.